so let's start with install 4 j tutorials firstly i will show you how you can get an open source license in case you are interested and here are the prices for the tool which you can see and if we go here on the open source licenses you can get a license like i have done and uh, you can use it for all your open source projects okay this is a very good thing for example you can start something as an open source and then make it a commercial project and buy a real license okay so let's go on the next thing which is you can download it from here of course and um, it has a manual which i have downloaded you can see the manual here as a pdf on desktop and the manual is really 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 interesting and if you want to go deep inside this tool and use each and every bit of it except of that they have also made tutorials which you can find i will uh, put this link on the description and uh, these are getting you from the first steps to the most advanced steps i have followed this tutorial though i will show you now step by step how to create a simple installer for your java application so let's go let's go so here in the desktop i have a folder named xr3p install 4j here I have saved the files for the application I want, which is extra free player. You might already know it or you may not. So here on this folder named extra free player, which is just a folder name, I have the appropriate files in order to run the application, which is extra free player library, which are the dependencies of the jar file. Here is the actual jar file, a, a PDF for the program and a license. That's that are the files that are needed in order to run the application okay so here this is the the file from install 4j i have already opened it so i will show you okay let's go here when you firstly open uh, this tool you can see these sections general settings files launchers installer media and build if you go on IDs here, you can see the license and you can add it. By the way, the license will come in the form of an email which you can automatically drop inside and get it. Okay, it's easy. So let's go here on the sections now. General settings. Here you add the general uh, info for your application. And uh, let's go to the next section, section files. Here you add uh, the appropriate files and folders which your application need in order to run. Here on the launchers, we create a launcher for our application. I will show you more deeply in a little bit. Here is the actual installer, the windows of it, the actions we want after each window of the installer. For example, I will open this look preview form you can see this is a window where uh, our uh, this installer is uh, putting into the computer all the appropriate files okay this is a preview here on the media is the actual uh, what is this now let me see here you you configure how uh, the application uh, you configure which if you want a a, a gre uh, Java runtime environment to be bundled with your application and uh, things like that I will explain you and here is the actual build which dif with different options okay so let's go on general settings now here as you can see I have already configured that so it, it is more easy for you to see and I just explain. So here is the name of the application, which is XR Free Player. The short name, a version of the application. Be careful with these things because when you create an updater for your application, you actually want to be sure that are correct in order the application to be updated correctly publisher publisher url okay here it is the java version and uh, for example in order this application to run extra free player needs minimum 
Java 9 and maximum Java 9. By default now, Java 9 has uh, one version published, 9.0.4, and this is the last. So I just added maximum version here just to add. But your application may run using minimum Java 5 to maximum Java 8. No problem with that. Here's some extra stuff, but I want to keep this uh, tutorial basic for now. So here you can add uh, different languages for your installer. I have added only English and you can add many more media files. So here it is the output directory of uh, your actual installer. So I have selected to be as you can see this folder here. So you can see when the installer is created it is going here on this folder. All right. Okay. Code signing. This is about uh, Windows. And for example, when you run the um, installer, it will say if it is from a trusted source or not. And uh, here are the compiler variables. I'm not using them for now. Explaining other tutorial. Merge project, project options. As you can see, it has like tons of options. You can make something very, very, very advanced. Okay, here is something interesting and actually appropriate. Here you are adding the actual files of your application. So we go here and we do an add. And if you want, you can add only files or a folder. So here I have added actually the X of Replayer folder. I have shown you before this and all the things. So if you have a database here, you will just add the database here, the file of the database, and it will be automatically distributed with your application. So it is something very easy. So we go here, add new folder, and I, I will show you how it's done. Uh, new and uh, add files and uh, oh. Oh, oh, no, this, this is for creating a new folder for your application. Okay. Yes. So you go here, add files and directories and say you want to add a directory. You go here next, you select the directory. For example, uh, I selected extra free player before and you do choose and uh, you want to add it directly on the install folder of your application. If yes. Okay. If no different option. Okay, let's go here. Here it is what it is added with your application, what it is distributed. So as you can see, when the final application will be installed on the computer, you will have the license, uh, the PDF, the jar file, actually the library and Install4j is creating for you an appropriate exe file for Windows an appropriate uh, launcher for uh, Mac OS and an appropriate launcher for Linux. Okay. And the Unix. So here are some other file options which have to do with override policy and things like this. Okay. You can, uh, you can read and uh, these are more complex things for this first tutorial. So installation components in this step, you can optionally define installation component that user can choose for installation. For example, if you want uh, the user to choose if he wants or she to add these files and not include these files and uh, he can do it from the installation window. Okay. Here you configure that things. Here is the launchers. For example, I will here. You can create actually a new launcher and here I will edit uh, this launcher for you to see. Okay. From here you go and create a new launcher. Okay. It's very easy. You can rename it. So now this is a ready launcher. So my application is a a graphical user interface application. Here is the executable name. The executable name is the, the final name of the application. Look here, extrafreeplayer.exe. This has been created from here. Okay. Here are uh, many extra options actually fail um, if errors are done and the directory. So let's go here. Um, here is if an, uh, the application have some kind of error, you can print it to a log file. And uh, if you want to take the um, 
Here actually is the, the print ln. If you want to redirect the print ln to a log file also. Let's go on the version info. As you can see, this has to do with the versioning of your application. Manifest options. This is very, very important. Okay, so in order the application to run in program files, it must have read and write permissions and create folders, for example, if you want to create a new database. So require administrator. Okay, if you don't have uh, administrator uh, access, then your program may fail if it requires specific uh, permissions okay and here dpi awareness it has to do with uh, high dpi awareness of the of the screens and uh, oh, java 9 has already included that so here is an option for you if you want your application to be high dpi aware or no more details on it ask me on comments please because this section is a little bit tricky when you pass uh, java effects for example from java 8 to java 9 you may have problems with high dpi scaling and you might want to disable it and i will show you how i did it for extra player to disable the high dpi by default okay so here it is, you select that. Here is a Unix, option, Unix options, uh, Mac OS options, and things like that. Here is the actual icon of the application, how it, the icon, you see, icon. Uh, how it will be shown and um, you, you can make one. For example, in the image, I have the .ico file. Okay, so let's go Java invocation now. Um, uh, the actual application from where it is it is starting which uh, jar file it will call the launcher so here it will call the xrplayer.jar and here you have to specify the main class which is this in my application you have advanced options here something i said for before for the javafx programs which you want to disable uh, high dpi by default you can come from here and add this option on the um, vm parameters and um, you can also specify here if you want for example with java 8 to allow high dpi and with java 9 no so here I have disabled for, for Java 9 high DPI awareness at all. So native libraries, if you have for your application, prefer Java virtual machine, override Java version, 